years ago, my father was diagnosed with colon cancer, and 18 months later, he passed away. At that time, I was working for a large private corporation, and I was obviously faced, uh, I came face to face with how short and fragile life is, and I started to evaluate my own life. And I realized two things about it. Um, I am not an independently wealthy person. I have to work for a living. And the amount of time I was spending at work, 10 to 12 hours of my day, was huge in proportion to the time I was spending with my family, my loved ones, and a parent who was dying. And the second thing I realized was that the 10, 12 hours a day that I was spending at my job had nothing to do with global warming. It was not making an impact on it. It was not making an impact on reducing poverty. It was doing nothing for uh, hunger prevention. It was doing nothing for reducing obesity. At the end of the day, my life, my whole life as I knew it, was pointless. I believe that the very act of revenue generation, whether it be as an individual earning a salary, a corporation earning revenues, or a government earning tax dollars, is pointless. It is completely pointless unless it improves lives and communities. The little business that I started at the end of this, I decided after my father died that I was going to do something about it. And I quit my job. I traded in my business suit for an apron. And I founded a small company, started a small company in the food sector. Tiffin Day is a boutique food business that delivers plant-based lunches to busy people in Toronto's downtown. We specialize in plant-based lunches. We deliver our meals in stainless steel containers called tiffins, the reusable little lunch boxes that are so iconic in South Asia. And the whole purpose for forming this business was impact. Um, Mars Discovery District are my uh, business advisors. You may have heard about them in Toronto. They helped me model this business so that it, was a, or it is a social purpose business with a triple bottom line. What this means is we're a for-profit business, but environmental sustainability and social hiring are core to what we do. Starting out with our plant-based menu. Our menu at Tiffin Day is vegan. It's not vegetarian. There's a difference. Um, a vegan meal does not include anything that comes from an animal. Obviously not meat, but no milk, no butter, no eggs, no, uh, no honey that comes from bees. It's completely plant-based. And the reason for this was a study done by the Environmental Working Group in the US, EWG.org. They did a study that showed that if every American, 350 million people, if every American ate just one plant-based meal a week, we're not talking about turning into vegans permanently, just one plant-based meal a week, it was like taking 7.8 million automobiles off the road. This was huge. To me, this was huge when I learned this because it meant I didn't need huge technology, I didn't need huge investment, we didn't need huge infrastructure changes to have direct impact on climate change, and this excited me. And so Tiffin Day's menu is vegan. The Tiffins speak for themselves. It's a reusable lunchbox, and it allows us to deliver a litterless meal. But Harley, that's our little e-bike. We call her Harley. Harley is a standard e-bike, just like the ones you see out there, a two-wheel e-bike. Harley is a three-wheel e-bike. It came with a flat bed. It was a straight import from China, and we built this cabinet. The bike cost me $2,000. The cabinet cost me five. Anyway, <laughs> Harley allows us to deliver our meals emissions-free in Toronto's downtown core, and we absolutely love her. I drive her myself. But what gives me the real warm and fuzzies and what is so rewarding about my job and what I do is the social hiring agenda. There's a community in Toronto called Crescent Town. Um, it has a heavy South Asian immigrant population, and it's recognized by the City of Toronto as a priority neighborhood in Toronto. 70, almost 70% of the women in this neighborhood do not work, and they don't work because English is not their first language, and they have young children that limits the amount of hours that they have to go to work. The low income cutoff for a family of three, two adults and a child, is a little over $28,000. In this community, 40% of the families live below the low income cutoff because these are single income families. Jobs are desperately needed for these women and jobs that accommodate their situation. And my little lunchtime business, focus on lunchtime, allows them to work while their kids are at school. So it worked out beautifully. And so we exclusively hire women from the Crescent Town neighborhood. 
Now, I've gone on about the social and environmental uh, impact that we're having, but keep in mind for entrepreneurs, you must be highly motivated capitalists to be social entrepreneurs because without money, environmental and social change is impossible. You need money to do that. And as a social entrepreneur, some of the, some of the decisions that you make with money become what your social enterprise and your social purpose business becomes. And I have a little story to share with you about that. Nothing wrong with the slides. I want you to focus on me rather than slides there. <laughs> um, a, a little over a year ago, I started the process of raising capital to grow my small business. And um, banks and traditional lending sources are uh, not available to businesses like mine because I am in food and that's considered high risk. So banks don't lend to companies like mine. So private capital is where I need to start my search. And uh, you know, that comes through networking and you know, making phone calls. Mars certainly helps with introductions, stuff like that. But it took a while, and out of the blue one day, a South Asian gentleman from BC gave me a call. And he had heard my story, he'd seen my video, I'm not sure what. But uh, anyway, he fell in love with the business idea and wanted to know if he could help. And uh, when I asked him about what he did, he owned about half a dozen subway franchises across the country. He had you know, a few other businesses. He had a bit of loose change in his pocket to spare. So he flew down from BC to meet with me and I was absolutely so excited and delighted because it sounded really good. This was a guy who you know, knew about the food business and it sounded like you know, something that was gonna happen. So we sat down and I you know, told him about my triple bottom line and you know, showed him my financial statements, which were humble, they were humble compared to his Subway franchises. But he looked at them and he said, yeah, yeah, this is all very positive, this is really good, but I've got a few ideas on how you can grow your business a little faster and you know, we can get there a little faster. And I said, hey, I'm all ears, this is great. So he said, the first thing you need to do is to give the customer what they're asking for. You need to put butter chicken and naan bread on your menu. <laughs> now, I thought the first part of our conversation had not happened, and I thought, so, so we went through that again, and I said, you know, taking 7.6 7 million automobiles off the road, this is really important, the vegan menu, really important, and after 10 minutes, he gave up, he realized that was, that was you know, not, we weren't going to cross that line, that was a given, it was not negotiable. And then he said, okay, there are a couple of other things we can do. Now, my business right now, the lunches are only available in the downtown core, that's because our Harley has a range of 40 kilometers, that's it. My demand is coming from Mississauga and North York. And my expansion plan includes a small satellite location, one in Mississauga and one in North York. And he looked at this and he goes, you know, we can do things more efficiently, we can do things better. And he said, you know, what we really should do is set up a warehouse location in Etobicoke and then service the other areas with a small truck, a small car. And I agree, that's a more efficient way to do business. I totally agree. My background comes from big box retail. And central warehousing is extremely efficient for the corporation, extremely uh, efficient. In the 1980s and 90s, a lot of big uh, organizations went to central warehousing because of that. However, it doesn't work for the environment. Absolutely doesn't. Central warehousing is the reason why a farmer in Guelph cannot sell his tomatoes to your big box grocer in Guelph because it has to be shipped to their warehouse and from there it gets trucked to your store in Guelph. 18% of greenhouse gases are emitted by the food industry. It is a highly polluting industry and it does not work for my business. It does not work for Tiffin Day. So I told this gentleman that I said, no, 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 we can't have central warehousing for this reason. Then he brought up a few other things, including my payroll costs, which were a little higher. I do not pay my staff minimum wage. It is not required in the food industry. I pay them above minimum wage. Okay, so we went through all of this, and in the end, after about 45, 50 minutes, he started getting frustrated. And he was, you know, I was not happy with the way the conversation was going, and he said, you know, I can't invest my money in your business. I really can't, it's too small. You are like a pimple on a gnat on the butt of an elephant. A pimple on a gnat on the butt of an elephant, he said, that's to me. Now, he was a South Asian gentleman and he said it with an accent and my first instinct was to burst out laughing. I laughed. And then, <laughs> and then I thought, oh my God, did I hear your inner voice? Can you actually say this to someone out loud? Was this something that should have been kept inside? I was shocked, I was shocked that he said this to me. And then the anger sat in. I was really angry because do you think I do not know that adding butter chicken to my menu will increase my sales? You think I don't know that? 
as a social entrepreneur and someone who has made a commitment to doing business sustainably. I was angry that this man likened me to a pimple when the decisions that I make are extremely difficult. So I looked at him and I said, today I delivered 50 lunches and, I do, and they were made with ingredients that caused the least amount of harm to our environment and to the earth. I delivered them in tiffins that have caused no litter and garbage for the city of Toronto to take care of. I delivered them emissions free on my bike that has caused no pollution to the air in the city of Toronto and it did not add to the congestion and the traffic in our downtown core. I have two women who are unemployable who have been able to buy groceries for their families tonight. I arrived at this meeting emissions free and I will be leaving emissions free. This is what I've done for my community and for the environment today. What have you done? And well, needless to say, we parted ways. He did not invest in my business. <laughs> But the story doesn't end there. My story doesn't end there. A few weeks ago, I got an email from him. And he was just inquiring about how I was, how the business was going. Uh, in his email, he said he had been very delighted to meet with me. And I had inspired him to do something for the environment. And I thought, wow. He had placed an order for his first electric vehicle, the luxury Tesla. And I looked it up. The Tesla starts out at $68,000. The investment I was asking from him was $100,000. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't begrudge him for his decision. He's worked hard for his money. He's earned it honestly. And what you do with private wealth, what he does with his own wealth, was his decision and his alone. Bill and Melinda Gates choose, they choose, to put their private capital, their privately earned wealth, to social good. They choose to do that, it's a choice. You and I choose where we spend our money. In fact, my investor dude is probably wealthy because of the choices you and I make on where we're gonna spend our money. It's a choice. And the man who inspires me the most said it best on this topic, he said it best. Mahatma Gandhi, he said, the accumulation of wealth is like collecting cow dung if you pile it up in one place, it'll stink. But if you spread it around, beautiful things will grow. Thank you very much. You've been a most grateful of <laughs>